Howdy, I'm Kurt Williams, and this is my comic library. I'm really excited about making this video because I keep trying to tell my friends how cool my comic book shelves are, and they just don't get it, so hopefully you'll get it. You know why they're cool. And realistically speaking, my whole comic library involves like 6,000 something comic books, but I don't want to go through 40 boxes of comics in one video, so we're just going to focus on my bookshelves. So here's how my bookshelves work. I want my bookshelves to act as first a library of reference, so if I'm just talking to someone about a genre or a publisher or a character, I can reach over on my bookshelf and I have something to illustrate what I'm talking about. Because it's such a nice feeling when someone mentions an obscure storyline or character and I can say, oh, I've got that, and just go and grab it and look through the comic with them and talk about it more in depth. The second thing I want from my bookshelf is I want it to represent the widest, most complete perspective on comics that it possibly can. I want a little bit of everything that comics has to offer so that my own perspective on what comics are and can be and can do is as wide as possible. And I know that as we go through this video, every single one of you is going to say, well, it's not a complete perspective on comics without this story and this story and this story. And you're right. This doesn't represent a complete perspective of comics as a whole. But just like my perspective on life, it's only as complete as it can be right now. It's a work in progress, and I'll be adding to this perspective happily until the day that I die. So... Let's get into the books. On this shelf right here, I have all the comics that I have read already. And on this shelf right here, I have all the comics I have not read. With the exception of some of the stuff up top here that shows up in the videos that I make because I want to show something interesting that I have an opinion on or that I think is really neat. Kind of as a conversation piece, but also as a prop. And I like to switch them out once in a while so you have something different to look at. But aside from that exception, it's pretty much organized. Have not read. Have read. So let's start with these two shelves right here. I'll take a nice picture and pan through it for you so you can get a look at all the comics. Yeah, look at that nice smooth pan. That's some movie magic right there. Mm-hmm. So we'll start with the really obvious stuff, the things that most comic nerds have heard of and probably read. And keep in mind, if I'm missing something obvious, it's probably because I have the single issues already. So I've got the first three volumes of The New Avengers by Bendis and McNiven and Finch. I would much rather have the hardcover version, but I haven't been able to find it for a price that I like yet, so that's what I have right now. I've got all of Hickman's New Avengers leading up to Secret Wars, and then I've got Secret Wars itself right down here. I love that series. It's some of my favorite favorite Hickman writing. For Batman, I've got all the usual stuff, like I think this is a third printing of A Death in the Family. I've got Year One. The Dark Knight Returns is on my main shelf. Here's Year Two. And all of the new 52 Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Great stuff. I recently grabbed a copy of Batman Three Jokers, even though I have the single issues. I just thought it was good enough. It deserves a place on my bookshelf. Got some more obvious stuff like Daredevil Born Again, and this is an old printing from 1987. I really prefer to get older printings of graphic novels because they have that pulpy, really textured paper and they haven't redone the colors with a computer already. So the colors are much closer to what the artist intended them to be. They're a lot closer to the actual comic. Whereas around the time we got to the late 90s, they were recolored coloring comics on computers and it just looked flat and too glossy. Old comics need to be printed with old paper and old colors. That's how I feel. We got Fear Itself, one of my favorite Marvel comics from the last 20 years. More Marvel events like House of M, Planet Hulk, but not World War Hulk because I don't like John Romita Jr. Infinity Gauntlet, Kingdom Come, DC vs. Marvel Comics, kind of a lesser known event, but really cool. Marvels by Buziak and Ross, of course, you gotta have this. The first Secret Wars, not the oldest printing I could possibly find, but it's still got the good colors in there. Spider-Man One Moment in Time, I know that's kind of a controversial story, but I love Joe Quesada's art, and I like the story. Volume 1 of Walter Simonson's Thor, that's really classic stuff. And then just Volume 1 of The Ultimates, Ultimate Spider-Man, and Ultimate X-Men. I've got all the issues separately, but I like having a representative from the series on the bookshelf. And then, of course, what comic nerd wouldn't have a bunch of Alan Moore comics? We got V for Vendetta, one of my favorites. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, also a great comic. I recently bought this 1988 printing of Volume 1 of Miracle Man, but I was kind of disappointed at the colors in there. I don't think they're quite true to the actual source material. I've got all of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing here. That's great stuff. Both volumes of Top Ten. That's a pretty great quirky book. Not typical dark Alan Moore stuff. It's a lot of fun. And I've also got this volume of Albion, which I would probably enjoy more if I was English, but unfortunately I am American, so a lot of the cool references in this are lost on me. And you know that I've got Watch.
Watchmen and a Killing Joke. They're just on the next shelf down. Moving on to the less obvious things, I've got Grant Morrison's Animal Man, the first four volumes, though I think Morrison only wrote the first three. I kind of got bored after the third one, so I gave up on those. Kurt Busiek's Astro City was really good. I slept on that for a while, but this one I bought recently, and it was great writing, really. I think I got the Children's Crusade for free at a convention just because I filled out some information or whatever. I've got the first three volumes of Rick Remender's Uncanny Avengers. Love John Cassidy's work. I'll buy anything he draws. A few Batman stories here that aren't super high profile, but they're pretty good. We got Batman and Robin by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely. I love that creative team. I'll buy anything they make. Batman Who Laughs was okay. Not my favorite thing. The Marvel Knights Captain America storyline is some of the best Captain America reading out there. It came out right after 9-11, and it is so appropriate and tastefully done. And it's got John Cassidy art, which is great. Here's a 1990 collection of Captain America comics that were drawn by John Byrne. Another one of those older graphic novels that preserves the colors pretty well. Captain America Reborn, I remember being just okay. I wasn't super impressed by it. The Life and Death of Captain Marvel by Jim Starlin. I already pulled that out. This is a first printing from 1990 of a few issues of Daredevil that were penciled by Frank Miller but not written by him. Really great classic Daredevil versus Bullseye stuff. These two volumes of Daredevil drawn by Joe Quesada are two of my favorite volumes of Daredevil out there. Kevin Smith wrote a really great story with Guardian Devil, and then David Mack wrote another really great story with Parts of a Whole. And if you saw my video on Echo, that's where she's introduced. Volume 1 of Daredevil by Ed Brubaker is alright. I haven't collected all of it, so I don't have a really complete perspective on it. I have all of Daredevil by Mark Wade, but I only have the first two volumes in trade. I've got the first three volumes of Deadly Class here. I'm hoping to find more, but I like finding them cheap. Wes Craig is a great artist. I wholeheartedly recommend you pick up his new series, Kaya, which I've been talking about a lot in my videos. I've got Volume 1 of The Department of Truth, that's another series I have the entire thing in individual issues already. And Volume 1 of Die, which is kind of a D&D type comic, and I like D&D, so I figured I would like this, but it's not really my thing. This is kind of an oddity, I've got a comic written by Skillet the Band. It's not very good. This copy of the Electra Saga is from 1989. The colors were not reproduced very well in this. Volume 1 of The Eternals, only because it's Neil Gaiman. I didn't want to buy it for the longest time because I don't like John Romita Jr. Here's another 1989 Marvel graphic novel. It's a bunch of issues written and drawn by John Byrne, reprinted, and it is really good colors in this. I have the first volume of Gideon Falls here by Jeff Lemire. I've got the rest of the volumes on my shelf that I haven't read yet. Green Arrow the Longbow Hunter is regarded as one of the best Green Arrow stories, but not to my taste. Here's volume two of Green Lantern and Green Arrow by Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams. Still looking for volume one, haven't found it anywhere. This first volume of Guardians of the Galaxy was one of the first hardcover graphic novels I ever owned. It really holds a special place in my heart. Happy by Grant Morrison is a cute little story. All of Matt Fraction's Hawkeye, that's really great comics. Hulk Future and perfect, of course, and I've had this volume of Hulk for forever. Moving on to the next shelf down, I've got a volume of Ice Cream Man, but I'm hoping to get a big compendium of it because it's really good stuff. The first three volumes of Immortal Iron Fist by Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction, that's also pretty good. Morrison and Quitely's JLA Earth 2, that's essential reading for Justice League. Joker was okay, didn't love it. The Complete Justice with Alex Ross on art, that's great stuff. Little bit of extra League of Extraordinary Gentlemen there. The first two volumes of Manhattan Projects by Jonathan Hickman. I love Manhattan Projects. I've got a few volumes of Manifest Destiny. I've only read the first one because I can't find volume two. I've got three and four waiting for me to read volume two. A nice hardcover reprint of the first issue of Marvel Comics. I honestly don't remember when I got this golden age of Marvel Comics. I've got this kind of beat up copy of Midnight Nation by J. Michael Straczynski. It didn't really impress me even though I love Straczynski and I love Gary Frank's art. And it doesn't really say anywhere on the comic that is drawn by Gary Frank, which is weird. I honestly have not yet read this black and white version of Mr. Miracle. It's on the wrong bookshelf. Moonshine is okay. Murder Falcon is great. I've talked about that before. First two volumes of Oblivion Song. I'm also hoping to get a larger compendium of that. I've got the first volume of Preacher, but I just don't like it very much. This is a 1988 printing of Stephen Grant and Mike Zeck's Punisher. I love this miniseries. Mike Zeck's art is so cool. I've only got the first two volumes of The Sandman here by Neil Gaiman, but volume two is a second printing from 1990 and the colors are really well preserved. If I can collect the whole series in this print run, I'll be really happy. We've got Secret Wars and then Secret War by Brian Michael Bendis and then we've got Hickman's Secret Wars. Too many wars, too many secrets. I think there's only these three volumes of Seven to Eternity. This is really great stuff by Rick Remender. Then I've got Jeff Smith's Shazam and I love Bone. Bone is the greatest comic ever but I just wasn't all that impressed by Shazam. I don't know, it didn't really do it for me. 
I've got a bunch of must-have Spider-Man, like The Death of Gwen Stacy, Craven's Last Hunt, American Son, One Moment in Time. This volume of Matters of Life and Death is pretty much inconsequential, but it's a really old one that I've had forever. Of course, I've got old copies of The Death of Superman and A World Without a Superman. You can find these in any comic store. They are more common than dirt. All-Star Superman by Morrison and Quitely is one of my favorite Superman comics of all time, followed by Mark Miller's Red Sun, which is also an amazing Superman comic. And then I've got both volumes of Superman Grounded by Straczynski. This is another great Superman story, a good example of Straczynski's really great down-to-earth character-driven stories. I've got this one volume of Thunderbolts that's okay, and then this volume of Thunderbolts during the Siege event, which kind of feels out of place on my bookshelf. I've got the rest of this series in single issues, and it looks way better that way. I've got all three volumes of Skyward, which I talk about all the time because I love how simple this premise is and how much space it gives for just character development and fallout from the weird premise. Volume 1 of Trees by Warren Ellis was kind of boring. I didn't love it, honestly. And then I've got this big fat compendium 1 of The Walking Dead, which I haven't read yet. I honestly haven't read any Walking Dead comics except for the issue where Negan smashes that guy's eyeball out. That's the only one I've read so far. Now down on these two shelves is where things start to get really interesting. Here's a nice picture for you. We're gonna pan right over it again. Ooh, look at that smooth pan, smoother than butter. Real nice. So going over the obvious stuff again, we've got Watchmen, of course, Wolverine Old Man Logan, which I know I've mentioned before in my videos, Wolverine Origin, one of the greatest Wolverine comics ever, Volume 1 of the X-Men, that's just the first 10 issues of the X-Men from the 60s. Here we've got The Killing Joke, which I mentioned earlier, followed by Captain America the Winter Soldier and Civil War, two very common, well-known comics. And way over here we've got the first two volumes of The Immortal Hulk, that's the first 20 issues. I have all the rest of the issues in individual individual, but I don't have the first 20 issues because I was kind of late to the game. And down here I've got volumes 1 and 3 of the Umbrella Academy because I got them for a really good deal and I know, I know, I know I need to find volume 2. I'm gonna do it. Getting a little more in depth with these two shelves, I've got one volume of Before Watchmen. It's the Night Owl and Dr. Manhattan. I don't have the rest of them because I just don't care all that much about them. We've got the first three volumes of The Wicked and the Divine. Pretty good stuff. I'm hoping to collect more of it as I go. I think this reprinting of Wolverine is from 87 or 88. I know it's a really early printing. Not the first one, but maybe like third or fourth printing. Really great colors reproduced in there. Weapon X, no Wolverine section of a bookshelf is complete without Weapon X by Barry Windsor Smith. Wolverine Origins and Endings, that's where he gets his memories back right after House of M. Then continuing that volume of Wolverine, I've got Civil War and Wolverine Evolution, which I know I've talked about before. Then what I've got here is the entire series series of Wolverine Origins by Daniel Way. Now I don't think you can get the last five or six issues in one of these volumes, so I have those separately as just individual issues, but this series was one of the very first trade paperback series that I ever collected, so as a kid I would go to comic shops looking for just these. This volume in particular I checked out from the local library so many times and took them on vacations with me or just read them at home. This was one of my favorite comics of all time when I was a kid. I've got Ultimate Wolverine vs. Hulk, but that's kind of a joke series, honestly. I just recently read the first volume of Wonder Woman by George Perez, and it was great stuff. Really classic comics. I got this at a garage sale. I don't remember anything about it. Here's a second printing of X-Men in the Savage Land. It's from 1989. I grew up with access to all the uncanny X-Men from the era, but not these issues, so it would always bug me when they would reference what happened in these issues, and I'd have no idea what they were talking about. That's followed by this gorgeous 1984. I think it's the first printing of the Phoenix Saga. It's really beat up and fragile and I try not to read it very often, but the colors are perfectly reproduced. It looks just like the actual comics. Then I've got Days of Future Past. You gotta have Days of Future Past. Demon Bear. Great thing to have in your bookshelf for reference. I rescued this first volume of Excalibur from a friend's basement. He had all of his old comics in a crate and then the basement flooded and they all got a ton of water damage. So the spine is still really crooked and a little bit off color, but I've been flattening it out in my bookshelf, and the colors are not reproduced all that well. I guess I flipped to a terrible example of them not being reproduced well. That's really good. But Excalibur is a great series. Chris Claremont wrote it, and he's great, but Alan Davis drew it, and his art is so excellent. I got volume one of New X-Men by Grant Morrison, only because I can't buy issue 115, I think it is, where Genosha is destroyed. I've got every other issue from the series in single issues, but I couldn't find that one. So I gotta have the trade. Volume 1 of Astonishing X-Men by Whedon and Cassidy. I've talked about this a lot. It's one of the greatest X-Men comics out there. I've got X-Men Deadly Genesis. That's okay. 
Volume 1 of X-Force during the Utopia era. That's pretty good stuff. House of X, Powers of X, of course. You gotta have that in trade. X-Men Curse of the Mutants was okay. I got this a long time ago. X-Men Endangered Species is cool because this series came out as like five or six page inserts at the end of almost every X-Men comic for a long time. So it's really nice to have it all collected in one spot. Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire. I think I only bought this because it was half off. Manifest Destiny. That's a great new era for X-Men. I really enjoyed that. And then crammed between all these things, I've got Scott Snyder and Jeff Lemire's AD Book 1. It's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of Lemire's art style. Kurt Busiek and Carlos Pacheco's Aerosmith is really great stuff. I love that series. I bought this giant volume of Avengers Disassembled for half off at the first comic store I ever went to because I thought that this was the one by David Finch and Brian Michael Bendis where the Avengers are literally disassembled, but it's not. It's just Captain America and Iron Man and Thor in their own series at the time. That was a big let down for me because those stories are not as good as the main story. Hickman's Avengers, which ran parallel to New Avengers, did not impress me as much as New Avengers did, but I have all of it just because I want the complete perspective on his run. And I've got these really cool volumes of Dan Dare, Pilot of the Future. He's like Britain's Buck Rogers. It's super great coloring. Look at those colors in there. Oh, these are gorgeous. Really campy old space age stuff. I love Dan Dare. I've got the first two volumes of Doctor Strange by Jason Aaron. That's really good Doctor Strange comics for someone who's never read Doctor Strange. Fantastic Four Full Circle by Alex Ross. That is a treasure. This is probably the first hardcover comic I ever owned, and you can tell when you open it up by how many pages are falling out that I read this a billion times when I was really young. This comic kind of set the bar for what I expected from comics when I was around 10. I bought this recently, the entire collection of Impact by EC Comics. It's got this story, The Master Race, in it, which there's a whole separate video for on YouTube somewhere about how that's one of the most important comics of all time. So I had to have it on my shelf. And then way at the end here, we've got volume one of Miss Marvel, which was surprisingly good. Down here, I've got volumes two and three of Paper Girls. Volume one is up there on the display. This old copy of The Rocketeer. It always surprises me how big the fandom is for The Rocketeer when the source material is like four or five issues. It's practically nothing. Skip to the end is cool. I met Jeremy Holt, the writer, at a convention, and I wanted him to sign issue one of Made in Korea, which I liked a lot. And then I asked him what his favorite comic that he had done that he was selling there was, and he said it was this one. So now it's on my bookshelf. The Marvel Visionaries volume of Steve Ditko. Never hurts to have some good history on your shelf. Another really old hardcover comic of mine is Spider-Man Civil War. I got this from the same place for the same half-off price as I got the Hulk comic from. This series had a huge impact on the way I understand the world, and it definitely defined the way I thought of the characters Spider-Man and Iron Man. The Twelve by Straczynski is a comic I remember reading a while ago and loving, but I barely remember anything about it, so I gotta reread it soon. We Three by Morrison and Quitely. I've talked about this before. That's great storytelling. And then this is all of Wolverine Origin and Origin 2. I think I got this for a dollar at a rummage sale. Next, I've got my collection of Marvel graphic novels. And every time I walk into a comic store and ask them where their Marvel graphic novels are, they think I mean just this regular stuff. But no, I'm talking about things like The Death of Captain Marvel or X-Men God Loves Man Kills. There was all kinds of weird stuff that Marvel published under the graphic novel imprint. And I've only got about 30 of, I think there are... 70 total? Somewhere around 70? There's some Spider-Man and Punisher and Daredevil and Avengers and Doctor Strange and Hulk, all that normal stuff, but there's also cool things like Greenberg the Vampire, Super Boxers, Wolfpack, that's a classic story, or there's a sailor's story, and I think there's also a pilot story, but I don't have that one. I love my collection of Marvel graphic novels. It's very important to me. Then I've got Wizard Masterpiece Editions for Spider-Man and Wolverine. I've had the Spider-Man one one for forever, probably since seventh grade. And then we get into the cool history reference that I have. Things like comic books, the origin story, a history of the comic strip, or then I have things like a hundred years of comics, America's great comic strip artists, great American comic books, the classic era of American comics, a hundred years of American newspaper comics, and the world encyclopedia of cartoons, most of which I have not read yet. Don't let my bookcase fool you. I'm not some super intellectual comic scholar who knows everything. I just like having these here so I can look at them if I get curious or someday in the far, far future when I'm not very, very busy, I can just come in and leisurely scroll through them and understand better the history of comic books. And of course, to go along with that, I've got the Marvel 
Marvel year by year visual history and the DC year by year visual history. You gotta have those. There's also some really cool stuff that couldn't fit on any of the other shelves like Crazy Cat and Ignatz. I love this super old cartoon. It's like the very first version of Tom and Jerry. I've got this old beat up printing of Asterix from 1964. That's pretty cool. A fat volume of Pogo and then this really old copy of Popeye by Nostalgia Press. And I'm about to talk a lot more about Nostalgia Press. So this top shelf is my favorite shelf on this whole bookcase and usually half of it is covered up by my head when I'm taking my videos. But let's take a closer look at everything on this shelf. So Nostalgia Press published a bunch of reprinted old cartoons in the 70s, including that Popeye that I showed you and also this Mandrake the Magician that I have. They also did things like Little Nemo in Slumberland or Flash Gordon or The Phantom or Crazy Cat and I'm working on my collection for that. I love these old dusty reprinted volumes of those classic cartoons so I'm trying to get as many of those as I can. All the way at the end here we've got this big old volume of Get Fuzzy. I grew up reading a lot of Get Fuzzy. This is a really great newspaper strip. Then I've got the Illustrated Al, a bunch of Weird Al comics illustrated by popular comics artists. That's super cool. I Killed Adolf Hitler is a really fun time time travel story that has almost no emotion in it and that makes it better. I've only got one volume of the spirit. I'm hopefully going to collect more of that as I get older. This is a 1988 copy of A Life Force by Will Eisner, a really great example of why Will Eisner is one of the greatest comic artists ever. It's just a master class in storytelling. And then in great contrast to that, it's followed by an omnibus of Tick, which is also really great comics, but a very different emotion. I've got volume one of Akira. It's really the only manga that I have. I'm just not a big fan of the style, but I do really like the art in here. I just didn't have an easy time following the story. It's not a high priority for me, but I figure I'll keep collecting the series later. Then I've got the graphic novel version of Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I think that often graphic novel adaptations of novels don't don't go that well, and this is kind of one of those examples. Got a volume of Peanuts, but I got a lot more of that later. Making Comics by Scott McCloud. That's a very important thing to have in my collection if I want to critique other people's comics. Mouse, Volumes 1 and 2, of course. The first three books of Asterix in these colors are not perfectly reproduced, but they're much more acceptable than a bunch of other reproduced colors. This is sadly the only Lil Abner comic I have on my shelf. I've been trying to fix that, but I just don't find those comics very easily. The Shmoo is a great story. I wholeheartedly recommend it. It's a bunch of absurd fun. All of Tintin. Tintin. Tintin is great. I love Tintin. Up here I've got this cute pocketbook version of Astro Boy. I love Astro Boy. One of these Strange Planet volumes. I guess it fits here. The Marvel Comics Guide to New York City. I love this. I take it with me every time I go. This 1971 cartoon book called Raw Sewage is from when people first started realizing that pollution was a problem. This is a lot of fun. I've only got volumes 1, 6, and 7 of Sin City. I'm trying to collect them all in this format so that I can have the nice picture that goes across the whole thing. But it's getting harder and harder to find those. Next I've got Yetz by Mike Bosianowski. He's probably the first comic creator I ever met. This is a really cute bone adjacent tale with lots of fairy tale creatures doing cute adventure-y stuff. It's great for kids, but there's also some real craftsmanship to it. It's a great work of cartooning. And then after that, I've got a whole bunch of Pogo books. I got four in a row right there, including these two. They're both from the 50s. I love Pogo, not just because it's heavily related to bone, but because it just has so much charm on its own. There's so much depth of character and plot. It's just great cartooning. League of Regrettable Superheroes, that's a Barnes & Noble book that made its way onto my shelf. I bought this comic after seeing a video of a guy talking about how he spent 13 years or something writing one comic and he wants people to fail faster so that they can make more stuff instead of making his mistake and just taking forever to make a comic. So I bought it to find out if it was really as good as 13 years worth of work, and it's okay, it's not really my thing. I bet lots of people like it, but I just have no real frame of reference for the story. Volume 1 of Stan Sakai's Usagi Yojimbo. I haven't read this since I was probably 13. I barely remember anything about it, but I know that it's very highly regarded, so I have to go back and read it again. Persepolis, I only really have because it was required reading in one of my college courses, but it worked out nicely. And then, of course, I've got All of Bone, the greatest comic ever written in both color and black and white. Up here I've got some Bloom County, one of my favorite cartoons. Frank Frazetta's Snowman, the first comic he made when he was like 15, and it's amazing. A little bit of Garfield, I've got a lot more of Garfield, it's just not here. And then more Pogo. And then over here I've got even more Pogo. There's a volume of Terry and the Pirates, that's some crazy stuff. And then I've got this volume of Modern Masters about Jeff Smith that I used to make my Bone video. 
and this Art of Bone volume that talks a lot about Hocking Hills. If you watch my video on bone, you've heard all about that stuff. So that's the first bookshelf. Before we move on to the second bookshelf, I just want to say Happy Valentine's Day. And also, I'm releasing a new song today, like it's out right now, called My Love by Vonnegut, which is me. It's up on Spotify and YouTube and Apple Music and everywhere. If you want to go check it out and let me know what you think, I'd be really grateful. So now we're going to move on to the second bookshelf, which is mostly stuff I haven't read yet. And yes, this bookshelf is homemade, which is why it looks so terrible. I had books on the floor and I had a bunch of extra wood in the garage, so I killed two birds with one stone and now I've got a bookshelf. So this stuff you usually see in my videos, I've got Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith, which is just the culmination of decades of hard work. Barry Windsor Smith is a national treasure for his contributions to comic books. I've talked about Daredevil by Frank Miller quite a bit. I've got Volume 1 of Why the Last Man by Brian K. Vaughn. That's great stuff. Paper Girls I mentioned before. Planetary by Warren Ellis and John Cassidy is one of the greatest comics ever written. I wholeheartedly recommend it. I only have this because I kept borrowing my dad's copy of The Individual Trades and he got sick of me having it when he wanted to read it. So now I've got this. From Hell is one of Alan Moore's weirdest comics. It's really complicated. There's so much to dig into. It's really an accomplishment, but it's also weird. Not as weird as Neomicon, which I don't have, but pretty weird. Here I've got the first compendium of Saga, and I've got the rest of Saga as it's coming out in individual issues, but I'll probably end up buying the second compendium when it comes out. Compendium 1 of Invincible, I think I got for half off, if not less, and I'm kind of waiting until I can find Volume 2 at also half off before I get it. And then I've got some of my favorite old reprinted graphic novels that have really great reproduced colors. Camelot 3000, The Saga of the Alien Costume, that's Spider-Man. Marvel's Greatest Super Battles. I think this is like the second or third printing of The Dark Knight Returns. Let me take a look at it. I was wrong. It's the fifth printing, but it's from 1986. This was one of the first comics ever written intended to be a graphic novel. Then I've got The Sensational She-Hulk, which is what the show was based on, and Brat Pack by Rick Veach, which is okay. Coming down here, I've got some more stuff that really should be on that top shelf over there, but I just don't have room for it. I've got The Yellow Kid, which is considered the first comic ever, which sounds cool in theory, but it is really, really hard to get through. It's very, very boring. From a historical context, it's super cool, but from just a reading perspective, it's pretty lame. Here's another Nostalgia Press comic that's Flash Gordon. I've got this nice big copy of Tintin in the Land of the Soviets. I love that story. It's really goofy. Peanuts. You gotta have peanuts on your comic wall. The Best of Don Winslow of the Navy. I got this for, I think, $2 and I haven't read it yet, but it looks good, so I'm excited to read it eventually. Women in the Comics. I got it at a convention for, I think, $20 and I'm really excited to read it. This is from 1977, so we'll see how complete its perspective is. I just bought this recently, Joe Kubert's tour. I don't know anything about it, but Joe Kubert is a legend, so I figured it couldn't hurt to have. Then I've got some more newspaper cartoons here. We got Foxtrot, which is great. Calvin and Hobbes, of course. I really want to have all of Calvin and Hobbes on my shelf. Bloom County, another great one. We got some Dilbert. I've got a lot more Dilbert somewhere else, not here. And then a couple Farside galleries. Farside is great. Love Farside. Just recently, actually, when I made the Bone video, I went back and I bought all three volumes of the complete Bone printed by Cartoon Books. These are the first printings of Bone in a graphic novel, and it's black and white, which is how I like it. And they never finished this format for the whole series, but I like having it as just a part of history. If I'm gonna collect any series in every single format that it exists in, it's gonna be Bone. Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, that goes with Making Comics. Volumes 1 and 2 of Headlopper, I have not read yet, but I'm really excited to do it. It looks like kind of uh, Adventure Time, but more stern comic. My single volume of Hellboy, I really gotta work on my Hellboy collection. I've got the first three volumes of The Boys, and I've read these, but they haven't made their way over to that shelf yet. Hopefully I'll get the next three volumes. I like it well enough. I think it's better than the show. It's more entertaining than the show, at least. The fourth volume of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Tempest. I have not read it yet. I haven't even opened it yet. I don't know. I don't love Kevin O'Neill's art, honestly, so I'm kind of putting it off and reading other things first. Tales from the Crypt is my only other EC comic that I have. I'm trying to get more, but it's kind of hard to find them in these old printings that I like. Then I've got Southern Bastards, which I haven't read yet, and Superman the Man of Steel by John Byrne. Not the best color reprint, 
printing, but it's John Byrne, so what the heck. Way down here at the bottom of my homemade bookshelf is a bunch of stuff that's too skinny for anybody to notice if I put it up top for people to see in videos, so I've got it way down here. Most of this is stuff I haven't read, like I haven't read this Black Panther yet, I haven't read Jason Aaron's Thor yet, I haven't read Final Crisis, which I know is kind of a sin, but I'll get there. Volume 3 of The Dark Knight I only really have because it was cheap. I feel like Volume 2 was pushing it and Volume 3 is just kind of ridiculous. Got a Wonder Woman anthology here that I haven't read yet, but I'm pretty excited to read it. Hickman's East of West. I've got the first three volumes. I've only read the first one. It's been forever since I read it. I don't even remember if it's good or not. Then there's a bunch of Volume 1s here for stuff I haven't read and I don't know if I like it, so I haven't bought more yet. We got Undiscovered Country, Descender, Black Science, and Safe Sex. I've got all six volumes of Gideon Falls, but I've only read the first one so far. I've got five volumes of Something is Killing the Children, and I just finished volume two, I think, last night, so I'm working through that right now. Some comics I got at Ollie's, like Batman Earth 1, volume two. Teen Titans Earth 1 and Superman Earth 1 Volume 1. I don't want to read those until I have the whole thing so I can read it all at once. There's Volume 2 of The Futurians by Dave Cockrum. I've got the first volume as a Marvel graphic novel and then this one is the follow-up. I haven't read Get Gyro or Sex Criminals yet. They're probably good. I don't know. There's Volume 3 of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I don't know why I didn't put them next to each other. Here's another Alan Moore comic, Tomorrow Stories. I had to really barter with a guy to get this down from full price. I have no idea where I found Superman President Luke or I probably got it for 50 cents at a rummage sale. Volumes 1 and 2 of March. I want to wait until I have Volume 3 before I read all of that. And then I just got this a couple months ago. Scott Lang's Look Out for the Little Guy. Haven't read it yet. The vocabulary seems a little juvenile, but hopefully I'll get to read it soon. Then down here I've got all my Cerebus. I've only read the first volume, so at least I know that I like it, but I'm trying to collect all these phone book volumes, is what they're called, before I read it. I just want to sit down for a whole day and read all of Cerebus. From what I've read so far, it's like Bone mixed with Conan the Barbarian. It's great stuff, really funny. And then for the sake of this video, I put all of my Miller World stuff in one spot. We got Nemesis, Super Crooks, Kick-Ass 2, Kick-Ass 2 The Prelude, Secret Service, Wanted, Huck, all four books of Jupiter's Legacy. And I'm still missing a ton of Miller World stuff. I didn't understand half of Big Game that came out last year. That was his big crossover event with all of his Miller World characters. So I guess I just gotta buy more comics. Then I've got classic Marvel Man. I read a little bit of Volume 1 and thought it was really boring. So maybe someday I'll finish it. I can't tell you how bored I got reading Volume 1 of Annihilation. It was so boring. And then I don't know what Cal Exit is. I think I got it for $2. I figured it was worth a risk. And there's some other stuff stuff here that I don't really care about. I got it for practically free. While I'm down here, I've also got Avengers the Vibranium Collection. This is a giant hardcover volume of some of the most celebrated Avengers stories. It's heavy as frick. I think it was a gift, and it's a very good gift. Lots of really great Avengers stories in there. Also chilling on the floor next to me every time I make a video is this issue one of Longshot, signed by Arthur Adams and Nicenti and Wills Portacio. Longshot is my favorite comics character. He's just the best, and this was my 5,000th comic. I keep looking for a trade paperback version I can put on my shelf, but I can't find them anywhere. I know they're out there, I just can't find them. And then also hanging out down here, I've got issue 51 of Fantastic Four, signed by Stan Lee. I got this signed when I was in 8th grade, I think it was at the Motor City Comic Con in Detroit. I was really excited to meet Stan Lee, I was thinking about what I would say to him for weeks before I went, and then you get shuffled into the tent, and then you have to hand your comic to somebody else, that person hands it to Stan Lee, he doesn't look up, signs it, slides across the table somebody else hands it back to you you leave that's it but it's nice that i got to see him before he passed anyway and then way up here at the top of the bookshelf we have my beloved pocketbook collection i love pocketbooks because i grew up reading so many of them like spider-man and bc and garfield things like that that my dad had in his collection of course i've got a bunch of peanuts comics up here there's a few mad comics especially spy vs. spy i think i have 14 volumes of bc by johnny hart this is really great stuff and then a couple wizard of id comics which is also by johnny hart at least it's partly by Johnny Hart. I got a few Family Circus up here. A couple volumes of Star Wars comics. These are super cool. There's Hagar the Horrible, Beetle Bailey, Mr. Magoo, Dennis the Menace, Tumbleweed. 
I've got Jim Davis's U.S. Acres. That's a guy who did Garfield. This volume of The Neighbors Kids is from the 50s. I'm not very familiar with it, but it's the right format for me. And then this pocketbook of Dear President Johnson is really fun. It's a bunch of letters that children sent to Lyndon B. Johnson, illustrated by Charles Schultz. Love this one. I've also got Captain Ecology from 1974. This is a really cute little pocketbook. And then I've got this really beat up version of Nguyen Charlie from 1969. This is a really interesting, pretty racist little book. It's got like burn marks on it and water damage and the spine is falling apart. I love it. And then the last couple things are the Starhawks pocketbook, which is printed sideways. It's pretty cool. And this is my only Spider-Man pocketbook. I don't have the ones that my dad has yet, but I love the Spider-Man pocketbooks. Those are the ones I grew up with. I was reading the first appearance of Spider-Man and Electro and Sandman and Doc Ock as some of the very first comics I ever read. Yeah. So that's everything that I have here. Like I said, my bookshelves are a work of progress. I love working on my bookshelves and I love seeing the history of comics become more complete, more filled out over time. I will very often be doing other things in the house and walk past this room and just get a glimpse of my bookshelf and I'll have to stop and just admire it for a while and think about how lucky my hypothetical children will be someday to grow up in a house with this bookshelf. I hope that watching this video inspired you to buy some more of your own comics. Maybe you saw something you hadn't heard of, but you want to go out and find for yourself. And I also hope that it did not inspire you to tell me that I'm not a good collector because I don't have X, Y, and Z. Remember, if you love any comic, you are a comic fan. Unless you only buy comics for the speculation value. Then you suck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Go stream my new song. I've got a link in the description, and I'll update you when I have more new comics.